Yes, that's right. In this box should be a GE Portacolor TV, also known as Porta Potty, because they aren't exactly the best performing TVs, or so I've read and so I've seen in YouTube videos. Never actually owned one or seen one up close myself. Huh. Now, a few uh, potential issues with this set. It didn't work. I uh, got it for only 18 bucks, and uh, it was shipped UPS. And I can see now there's a minimal of packing. Uh, <laughs> would have been nice if this box had a little more padding in it and was put inside another box with some more padding in between. I mean, basically on the top, this was it. So, uh, keep your fingers crossed. Otherwise, uh, hey, it was only 18 bucks. Uh, I think there's like one other bidder. Uh, the seller didn't list it as a port color It was just listed as a GE TV, I think. But he included the tube chart. And I could quickly see it was a color TV. And just judging from the overall look and dimensions, I was pretty sure it was a port color TV. To say, I've never owned one. Uh, but uh, I've seen photos and I've read up on them and I've been keeping my eye out for them. As crazy as it may sound, uh, these are now quite collectible. I say crazy because, uh, well, they're not greatest TV. But it is noteworthy for a few reasons. Uh, it was the first portable color TV, or true portable, I suppose. They might have called some of the large earlier color TVs, tabletop TVs, portable. But really, I mean, this is quite, quite luggable. It said 32 pounds on the shipping label. Uh, and uh, yeah, I can pretty easily pick it up. Weighs less than the uh, CRT and a tan uh, predict a tandem set, I would say. Ah, uh, so what else is notable about them? Well, I think it's the longest production run of any consumer electronics product. Introduced in the 60s, mid 60s, I believe, and made up, uh, produced up until the late 70s, maybe even early 80s. A little hard to pin down the production uh, numbers, and there were all, so many different versions of this. Uh, I think in the end they even had a solid state version of it. Now this is not one of the early versions, which are definitely more collectible. But on the other hand, this will have a better picture, assuming I can get it working. Because the early ones, well, the way they were able to make these TVs so small, two, two innovations. One, Compactrons. Every tube in this set, I believe, is a Compactron doing multiple duties, like a single tube, vertical oscillator, and vertical output tube. And I think a few selenium or semiconductor diodes, like for phase detectors. But also the pitcher tube, uh, especially in the 60s when this first came out. Uh, to make a small pitcher tube would have required a substantial investment, uh, in particular the dot matrix which they needed a uh, rather expensive setup to deposit all the little dots of red, green, and blue phosphor. So what they did to make it more economical and to get into production quicker, I suppose, was they just took the mask from a 21-inch pitcher tube and just cut it down. Downsides is that uh, very low resolution. Large spacing between the uh, color dots because it was designed for a 21 inch picture tube and they just cut out a big chunk of it so uh, if, I don't know what the exact uh, resolution was but certainly uh, not, uh, not, what I, uh, not what it could have been uh, but this being a later one actually I can kind of tell just from looking at it it's got vertical stripes of color rather than the huge dot matrix I think there are a number of different picture tubes used in this set uh, the tube chart, in fact, I think I put it even uh, listed a couple of possibilities. Yeah, 10 VABP22 or 10 VADP22, but I believe those are both the later style, so either way. Also, uh, I believe it was the first picture tube to use uh, inline guns, so red, green, and blue guns are, are uh, horizontal 
right next to each other rather than the earlier ones where they were uh, spaced with an equilateral triangle which makes uh, convergence easier. So cosmetically, well, tip of one of the antennas is gone. Not the end of the world, I suppose. Uh, plastic cabinet, simulated wood grain on it. Handles in decent shape. Uh, VHF and UHF, this was produced late enough that it had by mandate not only UHF but a clickable UHF tuner. The earlier UHF tuners were continuous tuning. We got uh, on a volume and color and tint. And also it does not say port of color. The earlier sets did, this one does not. Uh, from the photos I was able to pick out a model number and through a little bit of research I believe this is a 1976 model. It's a WHE5255WD. General Electric, College Park, Portsmouth, Virginia. And uh, no date on it. 175 watts. So, uh, seller said it didn't work. Nothing beyond that. Didn't, I don't recall them saying if it turned off, on or not, or uh, if they just couldn't receive anything, or, I don't know. Still got the uh, old loop uh, UHF antenna. Power cord's in decent condition. Assuming it is the original. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, the first thing to do is clear up some space on, space on the workbench, get this up there, uh, pop off the back and take a look inside before I would think about uh, plugging it in. Could be as simple as one of the tubes is burned out. It's a series strong set, so that would do it. Uh, I'm not sure if it had a circuit breaker. But I think there was some sort of protection device inside, maybe a fusible resistor. And then, of course, I can test the picture tube. Okay, so it looks straightforward enough. And some quarter inch screws. I have not uh, noticed any damage yet. No cracked plastic, which is a plus. Of course, it being one of the later sets uh, increases the chance of it uh, being in better condition. UHF antenna off too. And disconnect this. Internal antenna because I'm sure back will get hung up on it. Alright. And we'll slide through here. Obvious screws. Uh, could be more than that. Probably this guy's got to come off. I'm thinking that's it. Oh, I see. Back comes off more extensively than I realized that this is attached to the back. The whole body of it. Oh, I guess I was wrong. I thought, I thought that this wire uh, fed through, but no, actually I think it's just going up to these guys, so I didn't, uh, it's not actually going to go through there. But I did have to take it off of those antenna terminals for sure. Wow, that comes off really, really, really easily. Bottom is kind of odd, fluxes here. There's a uh, diagram built in there. Let's see. Set of procedures high voltage, at the time of the warm up time 120 volts, a contrast, blah blah blah. Just adjust it to big 17.2 kilovolts. Grayscale convergence info. Right. 
I imagine all that will also be included in the service intro for this set. I'll take a few reference photos before I do anything else. Shortly after I got this new video camera, I also picked up a new uh, conventional camera. Same deal, Canon uh, factory refurbished ELPH330HS. Nice camera. Certainly better than the uh, 10 year old Sony I had been using. Alright, so you can see it's a 10 VADP22. No, I don't have one of those fancy testers that can do all three guns at once, so I'll have to do these one at a time. The gun select. Hoping I, I'm hoping I have an adapter for this. I don't have to use that stupid universal adapter. Let's see. 10 VADP22. 10 VADP. Let's do right here. Socket number two. Do I have a socket number two? Yeah, oh, yes, I think I do. One, two, all right. <laughs> First time ever, ever in all my videos, I've not had to use a little universal adapter clips to test the picture tube with this thing. I just realized all three guns are actually lit up. All glowing nicely, so I'll have to be filaments are good. So three inline electron guns. Oh, I'll take the camera off the mount later and uh, kind of pan around inside to set more closely for you guys. All right, first off, let's do the red gun. I don't think this matters. I think this is for the tracking test, which you do after you test the three guns individually. 732, because you have to change these for each of the guns. Excellent emissions. Excellent life test. Next up, green. I don't think this matters, but I'll flip it over anyways. 11, 13, 12. That's not so good. Missions are solid though, but cut off. If I drop the bias down, the cutoff's alright. So I hope there's enough adjustment range in this thing that uh, I can get this into the operating range. Missions are good. Alright. Should use blue. 465. Back on 60 or 52, rather. Uh, shorts, no shorts, cut off. That's the same problem. Can't get into the right, can't get into the cutoff on 52 bias, but with 36, no problem. And emissions are great. Life test, great. Now I gotta look up how to do color tracking. Must test all three guns, blah blah blah, set to color tracking function. Something I've never ever done before. What's this blue mode? Set gun selected to R. Alright. Read good bad meter scale. Repeat for G and B. Uh. 
Test results. Bad gun or guns more than 50% lower than strongest gun. Well, <laughs> assuming I'm doing this test right, that seems to be just fine. Put the bias back on 52. It seems to be... Alright, well, <laughs> assuming the test is working right, that they all seem to actually have identical emissions. They're pretty darn close to identical. Now here's a little tour deep down inside the set. I haven't noticed any problems so far other than that burned out fuse. Got a little bit of paper down in there. something inside here. This is three inline electron guns. Big huge thing running down the center of that circuit board. That guy, that should be a delay line. I believe the reason for that is the luminance, the brightness information, just comes straight through the video detector, the IF video detector, right to the green gun. Whereas the uh, red and the blue have to go through the chroma demod stuff, which delays the signal a little bit, and they all come to their guns at the right time. You gotta delay the luminance a little. Looks to be all in pretty good shape. Now, I noticed on the tube chart they also describe the fuses. F400 replaced with blah blah blah, 2.5 amp slow blow, and 401 also 2.5 amp fast blow B plus fuse. And that is what has blown 401 the B plus fuse, which could very well mean that there is a shorter cap, or it maybe the set hasn't been turned on a very long time and the caps need to reform a little. And when the seller just uh, popped it on, of course, with no variac or anything, and a full power going, uh, I just blew out that fuse. So, well, I'll do the, I have the simplest thing first. I mean, I got some two and a half amp fuses. I just tack in a fast plug two and a half amp fuse and do a little uh, slow power up on the Variac. And I'll try to figure out where I can clip in a meter and monitor B. Plus. All right. Dug up a two and a half amp fuse, a three amp fuse, and a bunch of four amp. Let's go up to two and a half amp. And I've got a voltmeter hooked up to what I think is B+. Uh, can't quite see the voltage legend on the side of this big filter can down here, but it's a bunch of red wires going to one of the lugs. So, give that a shot. And uh, let's see, pop this fuse in here. And I dug up a cheater cord. This is a polarized set. PR57. And one thing I can't find this anywhere is the rectifiers. This little board here seems to be, says, says it's a uh, HE power supply. And it's got the fuses. I think it's got a thermistor, some power resistors. Uh, but, and I see this electrolytic cans down here and one up front. I think the one up front is probably the one that's right in series with the. Um, AC line for the voltage doubler, and then these are the other uh, filter caps. But I don't see where the, where the rectifiers are. This should be new enough that they're silicon um, rather than uh, selenium. Alright, PR 57's on. Oh, I'll just start off with 75 volts. Why not? And uh, turn the lights down a little. And. Uh, we go. 
nice hum. Let's see, we immediately got uh, voltage here, and it's climbing, which means the cap's probably forming up. Tube filament's glowing weakly. Well, this is actually rather promising. Well, let's let it sit here. It's actually down to 70 volts with the, the draw on it. Pulling down Variac a little. It's drawing a little of one amp. kind of stabilized around 163 or so, so uh, let's bump this up a little more. 80 volts AC. Oop, heard something out of the speaker. Try going a little more. To 99. Speakers definitely. Oh, and we've got a raster. We've certainly got plenty of red. And I recall that was the one gun that uh, had real good cutoff. Looks like the other colors are starting to kick in a little bit. Just taking a few photos for posterity. Well, let's see. Let's put this set on channel 6. The tuner seems to be working. Clip in a little antenna. I'm not quite sure in this channel clunker which how do you know what channel you're on? I don't see uh might be the most the one that's vertical, I don't know. Yeah, there we go. Plus is holding a 202. of the horizontal output tube but that's okay it's not inside it's just on the surface of the glass got about 260 for B plus <laughs> not to, this may be the newer color CT CRT but uh, it's still pretty darn low res So it's not perfect and that's fine with me because I do definitely want to have more fun uh, working on this uh
Now remember this is over the air, so it's a weak signal. Uh, so I'm going to try uh, uh, feed out a signal from the uh, converter box. Alright, let's see what the converter box gives us. And those kids, your, your poise, your charm. The way you dress on a teacher's salary. <laughs> Our guy, it always made me crazy. Wow. Down. I think I should tell you. I know what you're going to say, Gabe. You're, you're married and you love your wife. Well, oh, look, let me finish. Alright, Gabe, I'm sorry. Go ahead, what were you going to say? I'm married. I love my wife. Sure, the colors aren't perfect, I mean, but uh, hey, it is color. Oh, Gabe, Our controls Gabe, on the back for, to the guns. You're everything I've always wanted in a man. Well, believe me, you wouldn't like me. I mean, I got a lot of problems. Uh, um, uh, I, I promise you. It doesn't matter. I eat crackers in bed. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> Awesome first power up, and then uh, next time I'll track down surface info and uh, go through the set uh, more thoroughly. Looks like I have little linearity problems, and uh, for the color circuitry, could use a little tweaking. Paul? Yes. You sure it was nothing physical? Well, I'm glad I didn't leave this set playing any longer than I did because this cap is really hot. That one, not really. That one, not really. But this guy, it is really toasty. So I uh, suspect that would fail before too long. So I definitely want to replace that. And uh, but yeah, I'll go through the rest of it. You know, check all the tubes and uh, any other components that uh, maybe have not held up well with age and should be replaced. But otherwise, yeah, could not be happier with this first power up. Here's a set playing after tweaking the controls a bit. And things are definitely looking better, but uh, I don't want to leave it running too long because that filter cap this still gets warm. So that is going to be it for now. I hope you enjoyed this look at a GE Portacolor. This version I think is from around 1974. And uh, as soon as I get my hands on the service info, uh, I'll order up some parts and uh, I think it'll be a quick, uh, quick recap and should be working even better.